Hi there. <laughs> Things have been going on. And, well, they have not been good. Stop hiding behind religion. Hate has poison in the blood. Heaven is crying. The world is shaking. God is unhappy. The moon is breaking. Blood is feeling. God is coming. What do you got? War is futile. Oftentimes, when it is invoked, it is for the stated purposes of creating peace. Yet it is itself the antithesis of peace, thereby existing to undermine its own supposed purpose, which I suppose is one way to define futility. But war takes on a more nefarious form than mere futility, and in fact becomes the manifestation of a vapid, hopeless nihilism. When children, who are hosts of the immeasurable potential for better days, are the ones that assent to their demise, like sacrificial lambs to the slaughterhouse, all in the name of turning us into men. And who sends us to our demise if not the real men who cower behind big desks and raise up cartoonish mountains of paperwork to shield themselves from the immediate experiences of the wars which they begin. Oh yes, <laughs> we are a generation rich with examples of real men in high places for us to emulate. Real men who always played up the bare-chested, bare-back, horse-riding, stoic signal of macho masculinity, from whom we, members of the soft generation, had to learn and receive instruction even as he put us down and ridiculed protesting young people by claiming to have mistaken their symbol of collaborative resistance for a condom. So it's small wonder then that Russian young people want to avoid being drafted by this strong man, who, by the way, like many such strong men before him, has asked the children to handle the political conclusions of his own maneuverings, which are things that these strong men initiate without the initial input of these same children. Because when it's time to make decisions, we are painfully reminded of our place as mere children. But when it's time for these real men to face the consequences of their own making, Suddenly we are reminded of our strength. Suddenly we are called upon to grow up and take charge. Suddenly we are summoned to kill or be killed under the national colours of a nation whose story we are not even allowed to participate in telling let alone reinventing for the purposes of our modern needs. And start mobilization, and uh, it's just insane. Like, all my friends are uh, in danger, so I immediately decided to come back in Turkey, and uh, it's crazy. I am just for freedom. Russia from Putin, <laughs> for uh, democracy Russia, it's crazy. And it's crazy, so many people start to hate Russian people. It's, it's, um, how old are it's you? 27. <laughs> uh, when Putin has his speech, uh, I just pack my bag and uh, directly go to uh, Finland. In Russia, we don't have 
flight tickets right now, so I, uh, so I have a uh, Schengen visa, and uh, I found some, uh, I found some cheap flight from Helsinki to Istanbul. Uh, so yeah, that was my plan, and and uh, I made it really fast. I definitely don't want to be. Uh, like drafted or any, this kind of, kind of thing, that, that's for sure. I say let the young Russians escape that real man who laughed at them when they raised their concerns. And let him see the decisions that he made to the very end alone. Alone. Or at least let him call on some of the oligarchs that have kept him in power. Let him call on some of the old people that he has taken more seriously than most of the young people in Russia. Ah, oh, yes, real men. We have such exquisite examples of them to emulate. Real men, like, oh, I don't know, former president Jacob Zuma. Who, by the way, it's no accident that most of his supporters affectionately know him as Baba, because they see him as a father figure, conveniently ignoring the fact that by calling him Baba, they are relegating themselves to Ingani, his little children. These supporters are themselves parents of complete households, yet they run around saying Baba this, Baba that. As if they are not political peers with this man, who, being one man, has one vote like everybody else in a democracy. Where is your self-respect, real man? Yes, people forget that it was during this real man's administration that some of the young people of our nation took to the streets to protest saying fees must fall. People forget that it was this real man who suggested that unemployed young people should join the police force or the army. In other words, we, as the ANC, have failed to produce those jobs we always promised and will continue to promise. So how about you die to defend our kleptocracy? That way, the dual problem of unemployment and the youth constantly pestering us to fulfill the promises that we made to them can both take care of themselves. It's an exceedingly elegant and efficient solution. I really hope you're paying attention, dear viewer, because these things are linked. Very recently, on the run-up to midterm elections this November, the current administration in the USA granted student debt forgiveness of up to $10,000, with only some special cases that are higher than that. And guess what? This outraged some pundits who claimed that student debt forgiveness would have a negative impact on the US military's ability to recruit young people. As a college student at the University of Georgia, me and my peers are often faced with confronting the rising costs that come with obtaining a college degree. In the United States Senate, will you support further forgiveness of student loan debt? And if so, how will you implement it in the United States Senate on a federal level? And as I was traveling around the state of Georgia, I talked to people. Some people that wanted to go to college, they couldn't. So they ended up going and working on father's farm. Some military wanted to go to college, they didn't. So he went to the military and may have lost an arm. Now, of course, you might not believe that that's how this issue of student debt forgiveness actually shakes out in society, but that's beside the point because they believe this is exactly how it functions. What they don't seem to realize, however, is that they have now admitted the quiet part out loud. Specifically, the part where some of these student loans at a societal level function as a convenient debt trap against young people in order to grind their bodies between the gears of the military industrial complex on the basis of a servitude like the little slaves that they are that is meant to keep them as pawns who are used to protect the international interests and assets of the very same people that are gatekeeping the American dream from them. Activist John Stewart called out Republicans who stood in the way of health care coverage for veterans injured by burn pits. 
Boy, they haven't, they haven't met a war they won't sign up for, and they haven't met a veteran they won't screw over. The owners of this country know the truth. It's called the American dream, because you have to be asleep to believe it. They have the exact same playbook, these real men, these strong men, all over the world. They are playing all of us for fools. Also, if you'll notice, it's the same people who detest the youth. The same people who used to talk about how millennials ruin everything and we don't even talk about Gen Z, the equivalent of which in South Africa is our born free generation. These same people complaining about our inadequacy suddenly think we will be competent enough for the military. Like parents sending whole generations to military school, they are the ones throwing the tantrums. They don't care about us, they care about what use we have for them. We must just go and die for their ideals and their capital interests and their designs on absolute power. Beyond dying, they don't want anything from us. We're a nuisance. Oh wait, grandchildren. Yes, first grandchildren. And then we have their permission to die. All the problems of the youth that were brought to national attention under President Jacob Zuma were never comprehensively dealt with by his administration. And yet, when facing imprisonment as a result of his own political and legal misadventures, those who allegedly incited unrest as a demonstration against his imprisonment relied on the mobilization of young people as pawns in their games of political strategic campaigns. And it was also mostly young people who banded together in the aftermath to clean up after the mess of these old men's scheming misbehavior. The same maligned and disregarded young people had to clean up after the diaper of Baba. Hang on. Maybe we've been mispronouncing it. Us South Africans in our many languages, things tend to get mixed up now and again. Tell me, is it pronounced Baba as in father or is it Baba? as in barbecue, our infantile, overgrown, witto baby. Please clarify that one for me in the comments below. I thank you in advance. I do hope you see that this is the same story playing out, that these are the same themes showing up time and time again, pretty much anywhere in the world. They ridicule us. They marginalize us. They bar us from getting anywhere near the levers of power because we are nothing but children to them while they are the real strong men that our times so desperately need. Yet, the minute their own political schemes bite them in the rear, the minute their special military operations fail to go as planned, where does it all bring them? back to us. Perhaps then it's time that their groveling came paired with a delicious side of freshly relinquished power. Also, back to us. Because fundamentally speaking, personal responsibility on the part of anyone, including or even especially on the part of young people, without it being paired with power, is worse than a scam. It's a children's crusade. Listen, all you people, try and understand. You may be a soldier, woman, child, or man, but there won't be many coming home. No, there On that dark and dismal day 
how their hearts were choked with pride as their children marched away. Now the glory is all gone. They are left alone, and there won't be many. of anything, the most valuable thing that they can take from us is the lives of our children. I won't give them my child's life. At the soldier coming at you through the haze, he may be the younger brother who ran away. And before you kill another, listen to what I say. Person I spoke to said that he doesn't want to have to kill anyone or be killed himself. And a children's crusade is little more than an exercise in violent futility. It should be noted though that the young people that are able to leave places like Russia, they might not even have ever been the target audience for operations like mobilization. Oh no, it's the poor, the stuck, the people with the least power to resist tyrants. Nearly 2,000 kilometers from Moscow, the people of Dagestan aren't happy. Anger at Vladimir Putin's partial mobilization bubbling over into protests. On Sunday, thousands took to the streets of the region's capital. The demonstrations, which included blocking a highway, led to the detention of over a hundred people. On the other side of the country, in the Siberian city of Yakutsk, the weekend also saw wide-ranging protests against the new government measures aimed at recruiting hundreds of thousands in the war effort in Ukraine. Police were surrounded by groups of protesters chanting no to genocide. Those are the ones that are going to suffer under the grip of power the most, which is what real strong men do, right? Stand up against and dominate the vulnerable? That's not cowardly at all. <laughs> what a joke. How much of a joke? Well, given what we have discussed, and also the fact that Putin just announced recently that he's slowing down the mobilization, whatever worth you can actually put to any of his claims, much of his word, given all of that, I'm sure you can figure some of this stuff out for yourself. And it's not just you and me, the whole youth is depressed. And it's not just you and me, the whole youth is depressed. Press, 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 press.